Hello, and thank you so much for joining us today. We are 66 Degrees, your certified Google Premier Partner. Getting right into today's topic, over the past couple of years, we found that there have been a massive amount of activity in mergers and acquisitions. And 66 Degrees, quite honestly, has been helping organizations consolidate that data into one environment. More specifically, Google Workspace to Google Workspace consolidation efforts. Well, we've perfected our custom migration methodology. For those that know, there are always watch points when performing Google to Google migrations. Today, we'll review our methods uh, in that process, but also we're going to be talking about a previously mystical topic, the Google Workspace Domain Transfer Tool. And we do have a couple of great people on, on the call today, uh, which will be moving right into our introductions right now. So hi, everybody. My name is Dan Wagner. I'm a senior customer engineer here at 66 Degrees. I've been working with the organization for about six years, but have been working with Google Cloud since around 2009. So I'm pushing on 15 years um, and really happy to be on the call today with my colleague and friend, Joe Romeo. Joe, would you like to say hello? Oh, thanks, Dan. My name is Joe Romeo. I'm also a senior customer engineer for Google Workspace over here at 66 Degrees. Uh, most of my career, at least like the last 13, 14 years or so, I've been on the customer side of the fence as a systems administrator and IT manager in charge of corporate applications like Google Workspace and other enterprisey stuff that comes along for the ride. I'm really excited for this conversation today. Awesome, Joe. Thanks for joining us today. And our next very special guest directly from Google is Fissel Mahmoud. Uh, very happy to have you on the call today, Fissel Vessel. Um, would you like to make a little introduction of yourself? Absolutely. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Fessel Mahmoud, thank you for the introduction. Um, I am also a customer engineer for Google Workspace. Uh, I've been at Google for about four years, uh, both in a professional services role and now in a, in a, in a customer engineer role. I've uh, been um, in the productivity and collaboration space for about 10 years and uh, look, really look forward to the conversation today. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks again for being on the call, everybody. Uh, and I'm really excited to talk about what we're looking at in, in the introduction part, uh, specifically with Google to Google migrations. Uh, like I said, we, we have seen quite a bit of activity in uh, the uh, mergers and acquisitions uh, arena, so to speak. Uh, and we're going to talk about how us as a, as a premier partner help organizations uh, move that data from point A to point B. And why do we do these types of migrations? You know, uh, mergers and acquisitions, uh, again, there's been an uptick over the past years, but there's organizational changes, tightening of the belt, so to speak, uh, and in a lot of organizations, uh, as well as Google, look to us to be uh, the specialists there. Uh, Joe, would you like to uh, give a little comment on uh, what we're looking at here as far as why G2G? Sure, yeah, we, uh, like you said, we've just been seeing a whole lot of this, especially for something in the water over the last year and a half, we've just seen an absolute ton of yep. mergers going on. Um, and in most cases, it, it fits into our conversation today. These are two Google Workspace environments or more uh, coming together on the back end after a merger. So we have a really established process. Um, there's a there's a great process methodology with with some pillars that that come from Google around exciting end users and enabling services, expanding the adoption. Um, and making sure that folks get as much out of the tool sets as they can. We've yeah. got some great um, best of breed tools um, on the on the back end that we've worked into our methodology over the years. Uh, as you alluded to though in the in the lead, there are trade-offs. Um, when we do a standard Google to Google migration, uh, it is not merging the two environments on the back end. It is copying information from one to the other. So, uh, there are a whole bunch of side effects from that. Absolutely, right? You know, document IDs do change when you're doing these types of migrations. Um, I do want to give a, a shout out to CloudM, our migration partner, uh, where we do these uh, custom migrations that have an awesome tool set that we use here, um, and also some other tools uh, for f file migrations and all that. But specifically for Google to Google, th those watch points specifically, we can assist with that too. We have custom scripts that we can help, like, use that uh, find a replace feature but you're still losing version history you're still you know um, losing a, a lot of i guess you could say what you would the core collaboration features that you would nor normally would use um long term 
right? Uh, in in uh, in drive especially. So um, besides that, you know, we want to understand what other options there are. You know, while we we can still help in these specific situations, especially for highly complex like multi-source migrations, that's where what we're about to talk about and dive into, which uh, Fissel is going to be talking about here in a second. Again, super excited to have him on the call today, but uh, looking at um, why the domain transfer tool. So I'm going to um, hand it over to Fissel real quick to, to give a, a more deeper understanding of what uh, his role has at Google is and how um, the, the what he's seen in the past from Google uh, to Google migration uh, pain points and a solution uh, in the domain transfer tool. Fissel? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, I think that's, that's a good segue as, as you highlighted you know, the why of the Google Journal Domain Transfer Service. Uh, both yourself and Joe spoke to uh, what we'll call traditional methods of migration between Google Workspace environments and the various tools and, 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 and solutions that exist are in the market and have done a great job. Um, now, that said, uh, we, over the years at Google and certainly our partner, partners have, have had a lot of hands-on and direct experience doing these migrations, have surfaced some, some, some key pain points that have existed, just given the nature of a copy uh, migration, if you will, or where we're lifting and shifting data, so to speak, from right. one environment to the other. Um, so we, we kind of attempted to capture some of those some of those uh, glaring pain points that exist with with traditional migration approaches. We'll call them uh, disruption, right? We know typically migrations include some level of downtime, um, which will ultimately impact the users or will impact business. Um, uh, another area is in, in order to reduce the scope and timelines of the migration, um, given the volume of data that may need to be moved from one to another, companies will often choose to limit what is migrated as far as the amount of email, right. the amount of drive files, and that in itself can result in a poor user experience. Um, complexity, um, there's inherent complexity of just outside of the technical aspect, the project management of migration and its various moving parts, right? Whether it's the list of users that we're doing in a staged or staggered manner, the transfer waves or stages as we'll call them. Right. Um, and then from a technical standpoint, the, the, the complexity is the hardware and software, which the infrastructure that needs to be stood up and managed for the life of the migration itself. Um, of course, timelines, right? We, we, we've certainly seen uh, as we get into larger migrations that can be drawn out over weeks or even months, depending again on the volume of the data that we're migrating, his, historical data. Um, uh, from a technical standpoint, again, the, the capacity of the migration infrastructure, right? How much horsepower do we have in the hardware that we're using? Now, this can be on-prem, of course, it can be hosted, but nonetheless, there are there, there's there's constraints there, right? Uh, network in itself, network bandwidth, because we're moving all that over the network, and there's you know various um, um, uh, aspects to to, to networking. Um, and then again, from a timing perspective. Often we are doing this work off our hours or during weekends, right? Um, which in itself can can prolong timelines. Yeah. Um, and not, not to mention where we have to work around change freezes, and, and that can also again <laughs> extend extend time frames. Um, and then lastly, expense, right? Goes without saying, uh, cost of physical hardware, cost of software licensing. Uh, not to mention the the personnel costs, right? Where we have teams that are going to be dedicated to doing this work. Or, taking existing teams that have to um, now expend time in the migration in addition to their day jobs, so to speak. So uh, these are very real and, and material costs, if you will, uh, pain points of traditional migrations, which led us to a better way, if you will, um, with, with a domain transfer service. Yeah. Before we move on to that, I, I just wanted to, you know, we, Joe and I, and all three of us, quite frankly, have been in, in, the, in this field for, for a good amount of time. Um, and I think one of the misconceptions uh, when you're doing these consolidations, because it's a Google to Google migration, uh, that that second pillar that you're talking about complexity, you know, folks usually come to us like, yeah, it's going to be easy. Like it's Google's, you know, it's everything, but it's like, you know, I, I respect that thought, but I also respect Google's security model. I mean, essentially that's what, what is kind of like that roadblock as far as I, my understanding is. Um, so it's more, more of just, providing information that these are some of the more complex migrations that are performed in the world today. So um, I'm going to kick it back to you, Fasil, to talk about this wonderful new tool. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so what is so what is the better way, if you will, right? Uh, what what's the value proposition of the domain transfer service? And I I think this statement um, you know does uh, does effectively synthesize it pretty well. Um, if you want to just toggle back to the previous sure. slide, um, uh, so with with the domain transfer service, we're able to manage to merge two Google Workspace environments with no inter business interruption and without data leaving the Google environment. And that's pretty profound as we'll, as we'll talk through what that really means and the benefits of, 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 of um, benefits of that approach. It's amazing. It's astounding. It's a magic bullet. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's talk about the key benefits. Um, because we're not doing a, a, a traditional API to API based migration with the domain transfer service, in other words, shifting, lifting and shifting the data or copying the data between environments, uh, we have new, numerous benefits or ad advantages over that traditional API based approach. Um, uh, the first of which is that we're not do actually doing a data migration. Um, instead, we're changing pointers of ownership between Google Workspace environments, source and destination. Uh, what that means is we a, are able to leave identities intact. Uh, that provides a great user experience because identities, usernames, passwords, emails, none of that changes from a user standpoint. Right. Um, that also applies to Google Drive entities. So that means the same file, the same URL, and the permissions on that file are, on that file are retained. Um, for customers that may, and this is common, common um, uh, model is, maybe using gcp may have workloads on gcp as well and there's 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 obviously overlap from a from an organization perspective uh with the domain transfer service the existing gcp and iam identity access management permissions are also remain uh, remain intact on the gcp front yeah i love um, that you brought that up because when we, when we with our current method you know there are two migration paths that we have to do you know the 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 core data in google workspace but since you know all the line, underlying infrastructure is be, basically being ran on GCP, APIs, projects, those types of things. We have to take that into consideration too. So <clears throat> having that again, all encompassed in this, in this migration method is, is just really amazing. So continue. Yeah. Uh, exactly, Dan. Uh, from a GCP perspective, being able to be, be as, uh, as least disruptive to uh, that that environment is, is definitely a key benefit. Awesome. Uh, on, on the topic of, um, drive um, uh, entities being preserved, content sharing, uh, and also including both direct sharing internally and externally to the organization are preserved as part of the process, uh, which is a which is a great, um, great benefit. Huge value, uh, from yeah. a complexity standpoint, yep, 100%. From a complexity standpoint, um, many of the previous mentioned, previously mentioned pain points of that traditional migration approach are also avoided here. Um, and it, it, from a from a setup perspective, it requires very minimal configuration-based prep work on the part of admins within both the source and destination environments. Um, uh, but outside of that, the execution of the domain transfer service is all managed by Google PS Google professional services teams. Um, uh, from a timing perspective, uh, the transfer usually takes under 24 hours. In fact. Uh, that, that's the SLA for the service, but in practice, we have seen transfers take significantly less than that 24-hour period. So, um, again, again, a huge value and benefit for, for most organizations. Yeah, I can't, um, I can't stress how important that one is uh, when we are talking about a normal deployment, uh, a normal Google-to-Google -Google migration, a consolidation. It can easily take weeks or months, depending on the number of users and the amount of data we're talking about. So to have that all done on the back end in a day is absolutely wild. Yeah. Hundred agree a hundred percent. Absolutely. Um, and then finally the no downtime for end users, right? That's, that's a huge, um, huge, uh, benefit, uh, business users with the domain, when, when we're talking about the execution of the, the service, uh, business users can continue while working while the transfer is taking place. Um, so we actually run the transfers during business hours, in fact, um, and from a, from an end user perspective, they can continue working away as the migration is taking place in the back end. Um, so going back to the disruption uh, 
a piece previously that, that again, we can were able to mitigate that, that aspect. Um, Especially with identity, like it goes back to the second point of uh, entities and identities, you know, having to, it reduces your change communications and, and just change and change management in general. Um, although you should still celebrate when, you know, an organization consolidates, we're all under the same team, all that kind of a thing. But preserving that identity uh, and the data tied to that identity is just such a huge benefit. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's a great call. That's a great call out. Then um, the change management aspect, right? Again, in, in a traditional migration, the change management element is as large as any technical component. Um, mm -hmm. But and and for us to be able to um, either eliminate or at least significantly reduce the change management effort required by going this route is is is, is a welcome benefit for for most organizations. Um, I will state that um, because often customers will ask about this. Uh, so during the migration, there, 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 there's a short period of time where we revoke administrative access uh, for, for admins, but that is restored as, as within hours, given that once the, once the migration itself is complete. But I think these, these six points, um, among others, highlight some of those, those key benefits of the service today. Yeah, awesome. And I think there's also the next slide is talking about the successes and the stats that you, you had um, since the inception after the first uh, uh, successful completion using the domain transfer uh, tool, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I, I think for, for many organizations that as, as great as the services and, and, and the outcomes that we can realize, uh, there's always going to be the question, especially since the product went GA or the service rather went GA recently, um, you know, how, how much experience do we have, some of the successes, some of the proof points. Um, so it, it's imperative for us to talk about the, the, the statistics of the service. So although we have gone uh, GA in, in, in recent months, um, this product was used in alpha and beta um, internally, if you will, with Google, and we've been working with customers for upwards of four years at this point. Um, uh, and these statistics on, on the slide here sort of represent that, that uh, uh, yeah. In terms of over over 140 transfers, we've moved um, as uh, environments as large as 65,000 users, and uh, in terms of the corpus of drive documents within one of the largest environments that we migrated, there was over 450 million files that were migrated as part of the process. And again, yeah. in the order of magnitude of hours, uh, we were we were able to complete these migrations. So, I I'd like to use the, uh, the the term half a half a trillion files instead of four. Like, they just sound like uh, almost a half a trillion files. That's amazing. That's it's bonkers. It's really really awesome. Ah, oh, great. Absolutely. Cool. So I, I think, you know, uh, thanks for f that wonderful overview of your history, uh, working directly with Google and the PSO team um, and all your friends over there and just running us through the benefits. Um, and, and of course, with any benefits, there are some concessions that go with a, a tool like this, too. So um, which is part of the reason that we wanted to, to talk about this as well. Well, we can't really get into specifics because um, there, there are specifics about your organization that has to have a prerequisite. You know, we can definitely say it has to be a one to one migration. You can't do multiple sources, but there are also different things that um, we as your partner could do or your partner of preference. Of course, we'd love for you to come talk to us first, of course, but uh, we're all friends in the partner ecosystem here uh, in Google Cloud. So just if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and uh, talk through those uh, concessions and we can uh, take it from there. Um, but is there anything else we wanted to add as, as we wrap up this uh, amazing session we've had today? That was great. I'm really appreciative of your time today, Fessel. That was a great walkthrough. I think a lot of folks are gonna be coming to us asking about using the domain transfer service and it may be a fit for some orgs, it may not be a fit for others. We're super excited to have those conversations. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, hopefully, this you know we 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 believe this this service will benefit uh, many of our customers. So, look awesome. forward to working together. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and if there's anybody out there that's watching this that needs to know more about what we do uh, and what we're all about, please head on over to uh, www.66degrees.com. That's two sixes in degrees, all one word. Uh, and we do want to thank you for joining us today. And uh, take care of yourselves out there. We did it. <laughs>